Hi guys and welcome to part 2 of the mixing and mastering a beat in FL Studio. So the first step in the mixing process, I had said earlier that it is organizing samples and instruments and sending them to your mixer. I have renamed all of these. Like I said, you need to rename your samples and make sure you know exactly which one is your kick, which one is your 808, which one is your bass, which one is your clap, and so on. Make sure you label everything accordingly. Once you've labeled this, it's now time to send them to your mixer. So what you can do is just double click. You highlight everything here and just go to your mixer. Click on insert number one. Make sure nothing is sent here like you, you can see here. No instrument or sample is sent to the mixer. So I want to send everything at once. By clicking insert number one, right click and go to channel routing and just go to route selected channels starting from this track. By doing that, you're going to send all your samples and instruments on the step sequencer here to your mixer. Once this is done, we're now going to move on and go to the second step, which is cleaning sample frequencies using the EQ. So right now, before we start doing that, I want us to listen to this bit and just see what it is about so that we can see the difference after we've done the cleaning. Alright guys, so this is the bit that we're dealing with and this is the bit that we're going to be mixing. So one thing that you can observe is that already before I even start touching the samples, they sound clean. And that's one thing that you should really look at when making a beat. Pick samples that really sound good. So we're going to start with the drum set, which is the kick, snare, 808, hi-hat and so on. So I'll just highlight this point and go to my mixer. I'm just going to mute the kick. So when I play this and just add an EQ. So after adding this EQ, if I play this, so the kick is concentrated on this side of the frequency spectrum. So whatever is here going this side is just the noise. And the goodness with this EQ is that it shows you where the sample is actually concentrated. You can just get this and just make a curve like that. Not a very steep one, but at least there. So we just play and push this. Then we just go to a point where we feel like most of the noise has been taken out and the kick sounds clear now. Okay, so I feel like at that point, it sounds great for me. And by doing this, I'm creating space for the hi-hats and the other sounds to pass through. I'll move on to my 808, so I'm going to solo it. I can now add the EQ on my 808, play it and just listen to it. So it means I'll cut out everything here. So I'll do the same for the 808 and just push this until I'm at the point where I feel like it's clean enough. So let's just do that. Alright, so we've cleaned out the other part, which was much of just the noise coming out after the sample was played. So let me just bypass the EQ so that you listen to the difference. So without the EQ, so I'll do this back and forth. So I'm sure you can see the difference and this is very important because we've now cleaned our sample and we've left space for other samples to play freely. So let's just move on to the next instrument, the bass and just play it. Alright, so we can see that it is concentrated somewhere around this area. So we're just going to cut off some of the stuff here. So now let's move on to the clap. We do that and just add this EQ. 
so you can now see that the the clap is concentrated on this area right here so if we had left those frequencies from the 808 the bass and the kick they would have been conflicting with the clap right here so for the clap we're doing the the opposite just do that and make sure we're at the point where we feel like we haven't taken out the vibe in the clap we've taken off all the noise and we've left space for these other samples concentrated on this side during this process you can really check if you also need to cut out some of the stuff here and let's move on to the snare i'll come to the part where we have the snare which is this one and just add this eq play the snare and see where it is So you can see that the snare is somewhere around this area so i'll push this down all right so for this type of snare you can hear some type of reverbs coming on the high end so if i do this and that is if you don't want that type of stuff in your snare come here to the hi-hat play it and just add this eq so just do that so for this one it depends on how you want your hi-hat to remain so you can go further or you can just leave it somewhere here then we can move on to what i'm calling the piano here add my eq and let me just play this all right cool so it's somewhere around this area so we're just going to get rid of this then i'll move on to the guitar add the eq this so that's okay i'll move on to this uh, what i'm calling a lead So basically you do this for all your instruments and all your samples just check which frequency range are they in and cut out the frequency ranges that you don't really need let's move on to the next step which is level balancing so i'll just make sure that i make this a little bit bigger then i'll just add down here wave candy just to use it to monitor my level so i'll put this here I want to make sure that I balance everything below negative six so that I leave some room for mastering. I'll be able to boost it all the way to zero. So I'm going to use this to monitor that. So I'll play my kick and just reduce the level until I see it somewhere around negative six dB. All right, so I'll leave it at that point. Then I'll switch on my eight to eight and maintain the level negative six so i'll start balancing the, the two of these until i maintain the level negative six as you take your 808 down you notice that you'll be taking out most of its energy and still you won't be somewhere around negative six sometimes so you need to go to your kick and just maintain the level so i'll be coming here and reducing a bit of the kick and balancing with the 808 
in the next step i'm going to show you we're going to put some plugins on these two to make sure that the kick stands out and the 808 gives space to the kick but for now we need to balance them like this so let's move on okay so now let's move on to the bass make sure you maintain low negative six or somewhere around that area i think right there is okay so just be patient when you do this it's really worth it so let's move on to the clap we're doing the same we'll be balancing the clap below negative six So let's move on to the snare, switch it on like that, and then I'll balance the same thing. So from here, I can tell that uh, the kick is a little bit louder than most of these uh, instruments, but I feel like I can reduce it a bit. Alright, so even as you follow the levels and balance like that, just make sure that you're also listening and paying attention to what you really want. Let's move on to the hi-hat now. If you look at this here, if you read this point here, when I come here, it says stereo separation. So what I like to do with the hi-hats is widen them a little bit. So let me just play this. So now let's move on to the piano. 